starting off the day with some green surge. I like to take this first thing in the morning, especially with the first meal because it kind of gives me, you know, all the little micros because I don't really eat much veggies throughout the day. And plus it helps me with my digestion. So, but today I plan on training some back. I kind of want to show you guys some techniques that I like to do when I do train back. And I'm going to be focusing more on back fitness today. Um, I did find a show that I'm going to be competing in. Um, I'm not going to announce it yet, but just know that I'm starting my competition prep really soon. Let's show this real quick. This is um, the sour apple. It actually tastes really good. And then, oh yeah. Yeah, I like to do a scoop of EAAs with my first meal as well, just because, just gotta keep the recovery going. And you know, I prefer EAAs over BCAAs. I'll also be doing another scoop later, like with my training session. All right. Be all about to eat. Well, first meal, like I said before, seven ounces of salmon, a bagel, then I have a scoop of EAAs and then a cup of coffee. Right now I'm working on some programming that I'm, I'm doing for my um, academy. Pretty much I, I do like a training block every few weeks, depending on what I'm trying to focus on. Just to show you guys an example, kind of give you guys instructions on what to do and then the exercises. And I kind of tell you exactly, you know, how I would want you to perform the sets and all that. But yeah, this is like something I'm working on currently while I'm eating my breakfast. But yeah, later today, I, tr I plan on training some back. My goal is to keep on building, you know. I feel like I did have a lot of rest days this past week, week and a half, just to let my body kind of relax because I know I was going to be prepping soon. And when I go into a, a contest prep, it's not like I go into like immediate cut right away. It's more so just kind of building my body back up to a point where I'm more athletic, I'm more functional, my training's more efficient, so is my meal frequency. Just being more aware of like how I'm eating and training to obviously reach the goal. Whereas when I'm not on competition prep, I kind of eat like intuitively. I train still really hard, but not, I don't do as many sessions. I'll do like maybe four to five sessions a week instead of, I'll do up to like eight or nine if I'm on comp competition prep because I'll go to the gym twice a day. But this is my breakfast. I'm gonna be eating this meal and then probably heading to the gym in like an hour and a half because Probably gonna check up with some clients. It is Sunday, the month is ending and I have a bunch of emails and I will be taking on more clients for the month of February. So if you are interested in working with me, you can just shoot me an email. It'll be down in the description box below. But yeah, I'm gonna dig into this meal. Yeah, so when I'm ready to head to the gym, I'll show you guys where I like to drink as my pre-workout and then like during my workout, just so you guys have more insight on what I do. What did they, you get delivered? What did they send you? Huh? What is this? What did they send you, Bubba? Got some new flavors from Jack Factory. Got a new labeling, authentic way. Super stoked to try this one out that I was saying. This is the Fruity Cereal Splash. I'll probably do this. Post workout with like a low fat cereal. I'll probably use like kind of like some almond milk and mix like a scoop or two of this and use that as like the base for the cereal. This is the vanilla, so these two work. All right, guys, I did just complete that whole entire training program that the training block that will be starting tomorrow. Well, actually, it'll be starting yeah tomorrow and. Pretty stoked to show you guys some techniques and some variations I like to use within my training. I like to do a lot of supersets, a lot. It's just a, a mixture of everything. I don't really train one specific way. So certain days I'll probably do like a, a leg day and throw in some biceps at the end of it. 
it's a lot of different things that I like to do just to mix things up. But today I kind of wanted to talk about like contest prep, competition prep. I feel like a lot of people have a misperception on what a contest prep is or how how it works. Typically, I feel like the normal or just typical person that goes to the gym and thinks about like what a competition prep is, they think it's like go, going to like a hard cut right away and just cutting calories, doing a lot of cardio and just pretty much doing like a cut. But for me, I feel like I view it a little bit different. I kind of view it as like a, um, a time period where you can really progress your body in order to reach a certain point where you feel like you can present it on stage. So you definitely have to be lean. You definitely have to you know, build muscle tissue. But I like to go about it in different phases. So the first phase, which I'm, I'm pretty much going to now, is the first eight to 12 weeks where I pretty much focus on just growing train frequency meal frequency making sure my cardio is efficient making sure everything is working properly and just getting in tune with my body and just getting really athletic that's why i start i start off training like how i am now once a day more rest days now but then as i get closer to the show i'll have like a second phase where i'll start doing some sort of carb cycling and then i'll add more cardio in Sometimes I'll do two training sessions a day at this point of the prep, depending on how much food I'm getting. It all really comes down to my metabolism, but the goal is to build up food and get everything moving efficiently. So that's how I kind of view competition prep. Like right now, like I was saying before, I'm <clears throat> pretty much just eating intu intuitively and just not really tracking everything, just going by how I feel and how I look making sure my weight isn't going above a certain amount that I know that's like way out of the range that I need to be in. So right now I'm weighing about 204 to 208, fluctuates in between there. And I'm just starting up my competition prep now. So I have a show eyed out and I'm gonna start training for it. So I'll pretty much train for the competition. So everything I do, I would say evolves around my training. So my sleep, my meals, because I feel like for me, I think what separates every athlete from each other is definitely obviously the, the one major thing in bodybuilding, which is genetics. But then also I think the training plays such a big role, especially if you're trying to focus on certain muscle groups, it, it comes down to the small details. But obviously if you're a first time competitor and you're looking to compete for the first time, I would say you want to start off with the net just getting into athletic shape to a point where you feel like you're you're pretty efficient with your training. You're, you're going to the gym at least five times a week. You're doing cardio a few days out of the week at this point. You're meal prepping, but you're not really tracking everything to the T. So you should be pretty much already within a, within a routine. And then from there, if you do decide to do a prep, then that's where you kind of take things a bit more serious. You're more aware of like how your training is. You're also more aware of what you're eating, how your digestion is going, how you're looking week to week, seeing if you need to push more food. And that's another thing I think hiring a coach that's knowledgeable in that field is super important because if it's your first time, you don't wanna kind of just wing it because there's a lot of things that you can learn in that prep itself that you don't wanna miss out on. So I would definitely recommend hiring a coach that knows what he's doing and then also from there just make sure you're monitoring your training you don't want to just go all out right away the first week you want to build your workload up kind of ease into it and then as your body gets more frequent training sessions in your body's more accustomed to the training then from there you can increase the workload whether it be more volume or increase the weight and the goal is to keep progressing week to week, but obviously you wanna make sure you're recovering and everything. So that's kind of how I view a competition prep. And like I said, to know if you're prepared or not, that's sort of, there's two things. You have to be mentally prepared. You have to know what kind of goes into a prep, how focused you really need to be with your training and being on point with everything. 
because you can't just have one good week if you're prepping for a show, you know, especially when you're close. You have to have 10 out of 10 weeks, you know, like you have to nail 10 out of 10 every week leading up to that show, I would say. But I would say when you're like 16 weeks out, 15 weeks out, depend and the, the duration of the prep also comes down to your starting point. So if you're already lean, you feel like you've already been training for a few years, you put on a decent amount of size and you wanna you know, go ahead and do a prep, from there, if you're already lean, I would say build up your food, implement a little bit of cardio, and then from there, just try to grow into the show because th that way your metabolism's running, you're using all the food efficiently because you're pretty lean as it is. So then from there, you just build upon that. If you're at a point where you have a lot of muscle mass, but then you also have a bit more body fat, I would say do more of like a, um, I would say kind of like a recomp, recomposition phase where you kind of do like a little mini cut before the actual prep, just so then your metabolism is a lot faster, you're at a better starting point where you can start pushing food. And this typically I would say it would take like at least a 20 week prep, 24 week prep, a longer prep just because there's multiple phases, like I said, for a competition prep, it's not like you just go in there and you just start cutting calories, doing all this cardio. I mean, I feel like some people do that and they end up over dieting and they start losing muscle. So it's really important to know where your body's at, where you are mentally and just knowing how the process works. That's how I kind of like I said, perceive a competition prep and how I go about it. So I would always look at a person and see how much muscle mass they have. And then I'll tell them what I would do if I were them. And there's many, many different ways to go about it, especially if you're trying to become a pro, that's like, there's a lot more variables. You obviously have to build a lot of density, you almost have to look like a pro. Cause if you think about like nationals, all those guys in that first call out, they're capable of being a pro. You know, it's just the little things that they're missing, whether it be size, bit better conditioning, maybe better posing, there's like a little bit more variables you play with. But if you're just doing like a state or like a local show, it could be a goal, which I kind of had my first show. It was just a goal. It was never something I envisioned in doing as a career. Kind of just, oh, like they have this competition and just growing up, I was always competitive. So I was like, this is something I can use that competitive um, edge that I always crave and just really push myself in the gym. Cause I'm always training as it is. So again, when you're doing competition prep, you pretty much have to be already training regularly, but then now you're taking it to that next level where everything is becoming more accountable with you know what you're doing on a given day so if you can take any anything away from this i would just say just have fun with the prep hire a coach do a lot of research with you know training and try to you try to evolve your training and try to do so many different training approaches so then that way you can see how your body responds to which you know you might be more of like a volume guy you do more volume and you you can progress more that way or you have to train really heavy and that's the only way you progress you always have to play around with these things and see how it works because you can't kind of just rely on one thing to stick to it. you always have to be open-minded and try different things and that's kind of what i did throughout the years because it became like a full-time job training for competition so i knew that i had to learn different approaches different techniques kind of change things up in so many ways you know some things did work and some things didn't really work that well so with all that data i kind of know what works and i just stick to those and just keep on capitalizing just keep on progressing from there so that's just some advice when it comes to competition prep and make sure you find a coach that you know cares for your goal because that's super important because a competition prep is one of those things where you're putting so much time and effort into it so you would want someone that you can trust with you know your nutrition your supplementation and just the whole process of a show so those are some tips like i said for a competition prep if you're looking to do a show it's still early in the year and i believe shows will start coming up around like march april so planning a show is super important as well 
Um, when I was younger, I just tried to do every show I could just because I just, when I wasn't training for competition, I felt like something was missing and it just brings the best out of you, you know? It's one of those things where you don't really know how far you can push yourself until you're actually there doing the training day in and day out. It just becomes almost like a routine that you don't even realize it. It just becomes a habit and everything you do around the day evolves around that. And for me, obviously I'm trying to be one of the best in the world. So I just try my best to get every edge I can get. And I think as long as I'm consistent, no injuries, getting recovery and just keep on improving my knowledge of training and everything, I think I can only get better. But that's enough talking about this competi competition prep stuff. I'm about to go and set up my pre-training supplements, show you guys what I take before and during my workout, and then we'll go to the gym and hit some back. Gonna focus a lot on rows, but we'll see how the workout goes. I don't really go into the gym with a workout plan. I kind of have an idea on what I want to focus on. And then from there, based off of my first workout, I kind of just flow right through it. And you guys will see, I'll do a commentary like I did in my last video and just talk over and tell you guys, you know, how I'm approaching the workout and what I'm thinking and what I'm doing during the workout and how the workout goes. All right guys, for my pre-training stack, I like to do some carb surge. Today is back day and since I didn't eat that much, I'm gonna be doing two scoops of carb surge. This is gonna be pretty much feeding me during my workout, giving me a bit more energy. And um, I just feel like it helps with getting a really good pump as well. So really good. This is the peach mango flavor, yep. And then this is the peach mango. Same thing I had this morning, but I'm gonna have it during my workout as well. Mix those two up. So, one, two. And I'll say I'll start sipping on this maybe 10 minutes into my workout. And then before the workout, I'm going to be doing a scoop of the Nitro Surge. It's pretty good. Good energy. Has a beta alanine, so it makes you itchy a little bit, but it's a perfect amount of energy, and I like to use that right before. But about to head to the gym right now and take some back. I'm excited to show you guys this workout, so let's get after it. All right, guys, welcome to the back workout. So as you can see, I like to stretch out my back before I even get into the workout just to make sure my lats are really stretched out. Um, I'm going to be doing a lat pullover. I go for about 8 to 12 reps. This is more so just getting blood flowing, not doing anything too crazy i'm not going extremely heavy and i'm not training to complete failure it's more of just like a warm-up for the actual workout and i do a total of three sets of this i start off with the lat pullovers like this is one of my favorite exercises for lats to get my lats you know pumped and then i, I went ahead and did lat pull downs same thing not going extremely heavy at all i'm just focusing on just getting blood moving around and I'll, instead of doing pull-ups sometimes I like to do lat pull downs and I did a total of three sets of this I like to call this like pre -ex exhaustion set and this is more so just to prime my body for the workout and then for the first actual workout I did the barbell rows my bread and butter this is kind of a warm-up slash build-up going for about I think like six to ten reps just just feeling the weight it's getting engaged on how I feel. Here I have 185, same thing. I think I got like seven reps here. Go for six to 10 reps. Not training to complete failure or anything, just warming my body up. Just drilling the exercise just so then I can, you know, get ready for the working set. Same thing, this is, I would say this is a build up set as well. It wasn't that heavy. My back is pretty strong, but I would say my grip strength is what kills me same thing i think went for like six to ten reps now here this is my first working set i like to use a belt here I have 275 and i think i go for a total of 10 reps i wish i had lifting straps because it started to kill my forearms towards the end of this but as you can see for these reps i like to let the bar hang at the bottom of the rep i think that's really important because i see a lot of people kind of just repping out you know the rows it's important to let the weight hang but then squeezing it at the top so you want to squeeze and then let it hang squeeze and then let it hang and um that's kind of the variation i like to use when it comes to barbell rows 
that was a bit heavy. I did two working sets of that, and then I did one back off set. And this is kind of like a pendulum row. I kind of keep my back more parallel and just focus on the rowing. Same thing, you want to let the, let the weight hang at the bottom of the rep. You can see you're almost touching the ground, but it doesn't really touch it. But I like to let it hang and then squeeze at the top. Just did one set of that. Going on to the next exercise, I did like a hammer strength row. Shoot for about 10 to 12 reps on each side. And I would say for this exercise, you want to focus on pulling your elbows into your lats. And you should be able to feel your lats lock in. And then once you have that lock in, you want to just shoot for constant tension. Do the same thing on the other side. Once your elbows and lats, well, once your lats lock in, you just want to rep it out. Go for about 10 to 12 on each side. And then after I complete the individual sides, I like to stretch out. Here I stretch for about like five seconds, keep my breathing back, and I go right into, here it looks like I'm sitting down, but I'm actually standing up. I'm doing both sides, and I'm just repping it out, focus on upper back, trying to get, I think I got like 10 to 12, but I think I kind of just went to complete failure here. I like to imp implement this variation just because it really pushes me as a challenge. And um, I, I enjoy it a lot. Same thing again, stretch it out. And then for this next exercise, I do double dumbbell rows. And for this, I think I have 95 pound dumbbells for each side. I believe I go for about 8 to 12 reps. I'm not exactly sure how much I get. I kind of just go by how I feel. But the tempo of this, I do 8 to 12 reps. And then I pause and let the kind of just drop the weight. And I just rest for about probably like five to seven seconds and then go right back into it. The goal for this exercise is just try to build density within a set. So just the workload within a set is really high. And I go for the same thing, eight to 12 reps. I'm not exactly sure how much I get. I just go to the point where I feel like I'm really fatigued and um, these kind of workouts really push me. I love training like this. Those last few reps are the ones that kill and then from here, I just do an. I add in another exercise, which is kind of like a reverse, reverse um, rear delt row. But I kind of focus on retracting my scapula, so then that way it it concentrates on my upper back. And for this, I kind of just go into like complete failure. I don't really count the reps at this point of this set. I'm pretty fatigued, so I don't go that heavy. It's more so just getting the movement in and just contracting at the top of the rep. And the next exercise, I just do straight sets. I go for about you know 15 to 20 reps. I do a total of three sets of this. The workout before this, I only did two sets of that, the, the big super set. But for this, I do a total of three. And I just go about 15 reps, 20 reps. I kind of just go to complete failure, to be honest. And um, I'm using like a moderate weight. I think I'm doing like 185 here. And then for the last workout, I do um, underhand grip, lap pull down rows, same thing, just go to complete failure, do a total of two sets of this, and that's pretty much going to wrap up the workout, hope, hope you guys enjoy this workout, and you know, learn something from this, and um, I'll see you guys in my next video, the prep series for my next show will be coming soon, so if you're new to the channel, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and drop a comment, appreciate all the love, and um, I'll see you guys in my next video.